From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Your Haunted Lives – True Tales of the Paranormal by G. Michael Vasey, a collection of creepy, often downright chilling true experiences of the strange and weird that will keep you looking over your shoulder. Hear a free sample and support Marlar House by downloading the audiobook for yourself at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. An R2-D2 unit sold at an auction last week for $2.76 million. The 43-inch tall unit, which was made from parts used on screen throughout the original trilogy, was the most expensive piece of memorabilia at the auction. There's no information on who purchased the item, but witnesses said he won the auction by telling the other bidders, this is not the droid you're looking for. 11,000 people are taken to the emergency room every year because of fireworks. Well, most of the 11,000 people. Some of their parts are left behind. Sorry to break it to you, but you'll be doing all of us a big favor if you just keep your vacation photos off Facebook this summer, because we don't care. Nobody does. No pre-night out selfies, no pictures of cocktails, and definitely no sappy posts referring to your travel companion as this one. In fact, in a new study by Aviva, 73% of people said they hate seeing other people's vacation pics online, and the most unpopular pose of all is taking a picture of your legs on the beach and asking, hot dogs or legs? Nevertheless, the research also found that 77% of us will post vacation pics on Facebook anyway. And of those who do, 1 in 5 admit they do it to show off where they are, and 1 in 10 admit that they do it just to make others jealous back home. So in other words, people who post vacation photos are not your friends. At one of her concerts last week, Adele broke her own personal record by dropping a total of 44 F-bombs. It's good to have goals in life, I guess. This strange story is from Cicero, Illinois, and began when 30-year-old home repairman Wilfred Gonzalez Cruz was doing some remodeling work at a residence. Well, at some point he asked to use the bathroom, after which the female homeowner noticed her diamond ring was missing. The woman told her husband, who then confronted Gonzalez Cruz, a tussle broke out between the two and at some point the repairman allegedly popped the ring in his mouth and swallowed it. Well, fast forward to the police taking the guy to be x-rayed, which clearly showed the ring sitting in his stomach. So the police put him in a rubber room and gave him laxatives to force the expulsion of the ring. Well, uh, without going into detail, Cicero spokesman Ray Hanania said police finally recovered the ring two days later. Gonzalez Cruz was charged with felony theft and no word on what the victim plans on doing with the ring at this point although I would suggest a really good steam cleaning. Just six months after leaving Fox News, Greta Van Susteren has suddenly announced she's leaving MSNBC. Turns out she likes reporting to actual viewers after all. 57-year-old Alfred Zopelt has been working at the famous Belvedere Museum, a castle in Vienna that houses a major art collection, for the last 23 years. However, Mr. Zopelt was abruptly fired after they found out that he had one very bad habit, namely regularly washing his hands and face with his own urine. While surprised, Zopelt said his adherence to urine therapy was previously never a problem. But his notice from Belvedere says he was fired because, quote, you regularly rub urine into your skin, particularly the face and hands. With this, you soil your place of work and threaten the health of your co-workers, unquote. Believers in urine therapy claim all kinds of medical and cosmetic benefits, but those have not been proven. Plus, ew! Trader Joe's is selling out of canned wine that goes for $3.99. Yeah, I can hear it at a restaurant now. Would you care to smell the lid? Illinois, Connecticut, and New Jersey are all having some serious financial troubles right now. In fact, Illinois has suspended their state lottery. How irresponsible do you have to be as a state to lose money with the lottery? I mean, people are giving you money, and you only reward a small portion of that money to the winners. I mean, how are you losing money on that? In Gainesville, Florida, a 36-year-old woman managed to lose three fingers after she tried to wake up her boyfriend with fireworks. Yep, fireworks. 
The woman and her boyfriend told police they had been drinking before the incident, no surprise, at their apartment. The woman said she was holding a fireworks novelty item in her hand when she lit the fuse, while she'd been planning to toss the device out the front door, thinking it would make enough noise to wake her boyfriend. Instead, the device exploded in her hand, tearing off her thumb, middle, and ring fingers. Ouch! The blast was so powerful, in fact, that police said they found one bone remnant embedded in the ceiling. You know, next time you might want to just try an alarm clock. A Georgia woman is suing Emory University Hospital after she underwent surgery and later discovered doctors had accidentally left a camera inside of her. Now, those are some leaked photos nobody wants to see. Police in Fremont, California are on the hunt for a man who broke into a cell phone repair store. The robbery must have been spur of the moment. Security video showed the man robbing the store with a shirt wrapped around his face and socks on his hands. And yeah, that sounds stupid, but catch the beginning of the story again. Police are on the hunt for a man, meaning they've not yet caught this guy. Someone is buying Staples for $6.9 billion. Wow! How much do you think they had to pay for the stapler? In Brookfield, Wisconsin, a 26-year-old man's pizza order went awry when he mistakenly submitted an online order for carryout rather than delivery. Well, he realized the mistake about an hour later and called Topper's Pizza to have it delivered. But he flew into a rage when his food arrived cold, and after airing his grievances in a phone call, he actually drove down to the store and began hurling the pizza, breadsticks, and a few obscenities at Topper's employees. He later admitted to police that he threw the food and added that he made a mistake and didn't want to hurt anybody. Hey, you know, if you'd just driven to the store in the first place, you'd have had hot pizza and breadsticks, buddy. Arkansas's new Ten Commandments statue was run over by a car and destroyed less than 24 hours after it was erected. You know, come to think of it, it took Moses a couple of times, too. The body of a woman was found in an Oklahoma Walmart. The door had been locked for days, and everyone just assumed it was out of order. Now, all right, I can understand the shoppers thinking that, but what about the Walmart employees? Are, are you telling me nobody ever checks or cleans the restrooms at a Walmart? In Germany, a man's friend called police because his buddy's drunkenness had rendered him incapable of sitting up. No big surprise, turns out his blood alcohol level was 0.59%. Considering that a blood alcohol uh, level of 0.3% will send a typical person into a complete stupor, by 0.4% most people would be unconscious, and 0.5% or more often results in death. The guy was taken to the hospital and amazingly was released later that evening after a few hours of observation and a chance to sober up. Despite more than half of 1% of his blood being alcohol, the 49-year-old man was still able to function somewhat, because his body was apparently used to the effects of alcohol. Even more amazing is that he still didn't even come close to setting a new German record. That dubious honor rests with a 44-year-old man from Mecklenburg Western Pomerania who was arrested in 2008 with a blood alcohol level of 0.77, more than 15 times the legal driving limit. A proposed bill in the Philippines would send people to jail for not singing along enthusiastically with the national anthem. So, I guess we know where Colin Kaepernick will not be spending his summer vacation. It would appear the less desirable elements of society simply have no appreciation for the finer points of culture, in particular classical music. In Columbus, Ohio, shoppers and employees of the United Dairy Farmers convenience store say they have considerably fewer people hanging around, hassling and panhandling from customers since the business started blaring classical music. Shopper Allie Beck says the classical music is so loud she can hear it all the way down the street, but she says it's still an improvement over all the people who used to ask for change or bother passers-by outside the store. Instead of beggars asking for money to buy a fifth, they're now treated to Beethoven's fifth. Disney World's Hall of Presidents, which has been closed since January in order to add a new President Trump robot, has reportedly pushed its reopening to the fall. They're having problems with the new Trump robot because it keeps pausing its speaking in order to tweet. 
Michelle Rodriguez has appeared in five of the eight Fast and Furious films but says she could be done with the franchise if changes are not made. She wants bigger roles for women. Translation: She wants bigger roles for Michelle Rodriguez. It's been five years since the finale. Now it appears that a Jersey Shore reunion is in the works, followed shortly thereafter by the moon turning red and the waters turning to blood. Pandora is shutting down in Australia. But then Men at Work haven't come out with a new album in decades, so it's no great loss. Homeless shelters in Chicago will start serving Starbucks coffee with meals. So now the homeless might drink better coffee than you, and they don't have to pay for it. A jewelry store thief in India picked the wrong target. His demand to hand over a display case of diamonds was met with the gun of the shop's owner. And since the shop's owner is also a police captain, the robber was immediately placed under arrest. He even patrols the streets in India. Wow, Officer Karma really gets around. The family of a pair of miniature schnauzers were distraught when the dogs disappeared in thick fog while on a walk. They thought they would never see Charlie and Theo again. Their owners launched a rescue operation, and more than 120 people showed up to help find Charlie and Theo. Well, after 96 hours of searching, as a last resort, the family decided to cook sausages at the spot where the dogs were last seen. A short time later, Charlie and Theo appeared. Okay, now I'm happy for the family, but how on earth do you get 120 people to search for just two dogs? I mean, you can't get that many to search for a missing child in the forest, but you can get that for a couple of schnauzers? Taco Bell is launching $600 Las Vegas weddings, which include tacos, hot sauce, and Cinnabon desserts. Yeah, nothing says I love you or I want out more than that. If you're going to try and stiff your cab driver after a long trip, best not to have him drop you off right in front of your home. In Houma, Louisiana, Nicholas Pinnell took a cab from the New Orleans French Quarter to his apartment, racking up a $250 fare. But he allegedly jumped from the taxi without paying when he reached his destination. He ran into his apartment and did not answer when sheriff's deputies tried to locate him. So other occupants let the deputies in and they found him. He later told deputies that he knew he would be unable to pay before engaging the cab in New Orleans. See, now here it is, one more reason it's a good idea to stay on friendly terms with your neighbors. Never miss a single episode of the Daily Dose of Weird News. Download the free Marler House mobile app. In the app, you can find links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, watch other Marler House YouTube videos, sign up for the Marler Sheet newsletter to automatically be registered for giveaways, purchase Daily Dose of Weird News t-shirts or mugs, download audiobooks I've narrated, see my latest blog posts, and more. The Marler House mobile app is free for iOS and Android users. Download it now by clicking the mobile app tab at dailydoseofweirdnews.com or search for Marler House in your phone app store. Michael Phelps will be racing a great white shark on July 23rd as part of Shark Week on the Discovery Channel. You know, someone might want to do that mandatory drug test now, I mean, just to make sure that Michael was sober when he made this decision. A North Carolina man allegedly kidnapped an area family recently and forced them to shop at Target. Well, he would have taken them to Walmart, but he was afraid he might be taken out by falling prices. Republican Senator Ben Sasse, who is no fan of the band Nickelback, reports that someone has been signing him up for Nickelback promotional emails. Okay, I don't care, but that is funny. The Disney ride Pirates of the Caribbean will no longer include the Wench auction. Apparently, most pirates prefer eBay nowadays. President Trump is heading back overseas for the G20 summit in Germany. His trip will include his first face-to-face -face meeting with Vladimir Putin to take place on Friday. Well, at least he claims it's his first face-to-face -face meeting. I mean, back in 2013, he told David Letterman that he had met Vladimir personally, but now he says he has never met Putin. So who knows what the truth might be? I mean, he's actually set it up, so no matter how we report this, it's fake news. This just sounds completely ludicrous. Doctors say people should use sunscreen when using cell phones and computers to avoid blue light radiation. That's right, sunscreen to use your smartphone. On the flip side, does that mean that you can watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia on your phone and get a tan? 
Japan has announced a plan to land a man on the moon by the year 2030. They would have done it sooner, but they keep having to rebuild the space program every couple of years after being attacked by a giant lizard. Jared Carmichael is reportedly leaving NBC's The Carmichael Show after the third season. So now, network execs are scrambling to find somebody else named Carmichael so they can keep the same stationery. New research shows that humans didn't develop arthritis until they started moving from Africa to other areas. Experts believe it is developed as a result of traveling around the world lugging heavy suitcases. Police in Michigan are on the lookout for a bald man who is stealing Rogaine. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about the resale value of Rogaine on the black market in this case. Twelve greyhounds tested positive for cocaine at a Florida dog track. Well, you know, sports are stressful. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog career. Adele canceled her last two shows at Wembley Stadium because of vocal problems. She was hinting this may have been her last tour ever. You know, well, you know, maybe your voice would have lasted longer if you hadn't spent so much energy dropping F-bombs. Following an interview by conspiracy theorist Alex Jones with activist and alleged former CIA clandestine services case officer Robert David Steele, NASA was forced over the holiday weekend to announce that it is not running a child slave colony on Mars. And thank goodness that story is not true. Whew. Man, I was worried about poor little Martian children there for a second. Damon Wayans set off some Twitter fireworks on the 4th of July, calling the day, quote, Happy White People Proud of Their Racist Ancestors Day, unquote. Well, you know, that will help me remember which of the Wayans is not the funny one. Don't skip breakfast, double up on it. Download a protein shake an hour after your morning meal, and that could help cut your cravings, according to a study in the journal Appetite. Active men who chugged whey protein, they saw their hunger subside immediately by as much as 65 percent, and the volume of the shake didn't matter. Those who consumed 20, 40, 60, or 80 grams, they all ate the same number of calories at lunch. So apparently J.R.R. Tolkien, he had it right when it came to the hobbits. I mean, first there's breakfast, and then there's second breakfast. Kathy Griffin was recently interviewed by the Secret Service for over an hour. It would have been only a five-minute meeting, but Kathy couldn't stop telling jokes to the only captive audience she's had in weeks. The manhunt for an escaped prisoner in Germany was brief. The search began when wardens went to check in on an inmate after he failed to show up for breakfast, only to find the bars of his cell window were sawed off and he was gone. The prisoner was found hiding in the prison's attic. So now, isn't this how you ended up in prison to begin with, buddy? Y you didn't think things through. Harold Hager was born on May 17, 1917. During his life, Harold served in the Navy during World War II. Afterward, he spent the next 37 years working at Cumming Glass Works. After his wife passed away in 2010, he couldn't just sit around, so he volunteered with Habitat for Humanity in western New York State. And there, he does everything from sorting screws to testing light fixtures. And for the second year in a row, Harold volunteered more hours than anyone in the organization – at 100 years old. Yeah, suddenly I am not feeling all that prideful about putting my shopping cart back correctly. A naked female motorist led Michigan cops on a 25-mile chase over the weekend. The 48-year-old woman, who is from Georgia, topped speeds of 100 miles an hour as she weaved in and out of traffic on I-75. State troopers ultimately forced the woman's vehicle into a utility pole and a ditch to get her to stop. On the plus side, Guinness World Records just verified she is now the fastest streaker in the world. Police in Minnesota had got the word out Tuesday, don't stop and take selfies with dead bears on the side of the road. The safety reminder was necessary after a dead black bear was lying on the side of a state highway and the authorities received multiple calls of cars stopping along the side of the road to take pictures with the carcass. All right, so you didn't hunt and kill the bear. You didn't hit it with your own car. You, you're just seeing a dead animal on the side of the road and you think it's the perfect opportunity for a selfie? You deserve to be hit by a passing car. Or attacked by a zombie bear. The British Parliament has relaxed its dress code, making neckties now only optional. 
The theory is that if a fight breaks out, there will be fewer things that the politicians can use to choke their opponents. A 13-year-old girl told police that her 12-year-old schoolmate first asked her for a Chicken McNugget while inside McDonald's in New York City's Harlem neighborhood recently. Well, when she declined, the boy allegedly followed her to a subway station, whipped out a gun, and held it to her head. Even at gunpoint, the teen refused to hand over even one Chicken McNugget. The NYPD told the Daily News she knocked the gun away from the boy and told him to leave her alone. Police did not recover the gun, but numerous witnesses did report seeing it. The boy was charged as a juvenile with attempted robbery and will be prosecuted in family court. All right, this is quite possibly the most ludicrous story I have ever reported. I mean, refusing to give up a chicken McNugget with a gun held to your head? I mean, yeah, if it was a McDonald's french fry, yeah, I could see that, but a McNugget? A woman in China was extremely distraught. So distraught, she threatened to jump off a building. She was distraught because she had exceeded her monthly smartphone data limit. Well, fortunately, she didn't jump. She went over her data limit because she'd been watching soap operas on her phone, which ate up the data. You know, if anybody on this planet is in need of an intervention, it is this woman. A recent study by Microsoft revealed that the average person's attention span in this wild world of technology and social media is down to 8 seconds. A recent study by Microsoft revealed that the average person's attention span in this wild world of technology and social media is down to 8 seconds. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on your own social media – Facebook, Twitter, Reddit – and help spread the weird news. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for on the Facebook page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!